about four years ago, I was a brand new superstar director. I was a hot mess. <laughs> My leadership was a hot mess. I I did do a few consistent ideas, um, but I wasn't confident at all. Um, I was overwhelmed, really. I had a, a pretty good sized team, and in one month, I had added four brand new frontline directors, and I knew that I had to get my act together because I was, I just felt like I was spiraling downhill, going crazy, trying to do everything and not really knowing what to do, right? Um, I tried those little worksheets for, you know, the ones that you fill out on each person on your team, the ones that, you know, give you all the information about each person in your downline. And I, I got so overwhelmed and exhausted. Um, I had 90 frontline at that time. And I was just, it became impossible to keep up with that, and I, I began to get discouraged. Um, so I started reading books and watching trainings, and I did a whole bunch of that for a couple of months, and then finally I just sat down, and I formed this system that I'm going to share with you today, and I, I began to see amazing, uh, an amazing difference in my confidence and in my numbers. Um, and I'm so excited that I get to share this with you guys today. Um, I have shared this uh, system that I use with many of my uh, downline and even different directors that have reached out to me for advice and help. And I am pleased to say that everyone that I've ever shared this with, um, they said that it's a blessing, that it's helped them become confident as well. So here's your call to action. I want you right now to go grab a pen or a pencil and three sheets of paper, three actual sheets of paper. It doesn't matter what size, but not front and back, three actual sheets. And while you're looking for these items, I want to tell you that the first problem with leadership is usually what we're telling ourselves. If you're telling yourself that you're not good enough to mentor your team, or maybe you're telling yourself, you know what, they don't want me to mentor them, they don't want to be mentored, they don't need me, both of those lines of thought are dead in streets. And I want you to think about it like this. If you're a parent, at some point in your child's life and in your parenting, you probably felt like a failure, right? You felt like you didn't know what you were doing. Maybe even they made you feel like you were failing. Maybe they felt like or made you feel like that they didn't even want your parenting. Did that make you stop? Well, I hope not. I hope that you just got with a parent or a friend or a coworker, maybe you read a book, watched a training, or maybe you just dug down deep and did the right thing and changed that poopy diaper anyway. <laughs> well, your leadership is really not any different. You're digging down deep so that you can provide leadership for your team because they deserve it. Nobody said that you had to be the best, but your sensey children deserve your attention. So today, we're going to use these three simple sheets of paper, and I'm going to teach you how to categorize your team so that you're spending your time wisely, because many of you probably uh, maybe work an outside-the-home job, or perhaps you just have a, a small amount of time that you can work your Cincy business each day. Hey, I get that. Your time is precious. So first, we're going to categorize your team today, and then we're going to focus on what each group needs from you so that you can meet their needs but not drive yourself crazy in the, in the meantime. So let's get started. I want you to grab those sheets of paper in your pen. I want you to write a number one at the top of your first sheet of paper, a number two at the top of your second sheet of paper, and a number three at the top of your third sheet of paper. While you're doing that, I want to tell you that I have a no judging philosophy in my business. I believe that all reps join for one of three reasons. I made a sign. <laughs> I believe that all reps join for either fun, friends, or funds, like money, F-U-N-D-S. And I don't believe that it's our job to, to, you know, like judge someone's motive for joining because, hey, this is their business. We're just lucky enough to get to be on this journey with them. And so I, I don't think we should judge, but at the same time, as leaders, it's our job to identify with those who need us the most, who are working the most, and we have to determine the ways to best meet their needs and best mentor them. So I want to ask you a question. Do you get bogged down? Do you get bogged down maybe by a few people in your downline that happen to 
demand all of your time, or maybe you answer so many questions from the same three or four that it leaves you like exhausted and you have no time to really focus your time or energy on the people that are actually working their business. Because sometimes the people that demand all of our time, they're not the ones that deserve all of our time, right? And maybe you're, you're getting bogged down for a different reason. Maybe you're so focused, like I was, on mentoring just your front line that you forget those rock stars at maybe two or three or four level feet. So right now we're going to simplify everything. We're going to categorize your team and clear up all of the confusion. So grab your pen. All right, here we go. I want you to think of the one person on your team who is the least involved. This is the person who maybe, you know, barely gets their $150 in every three months. Um, they probably will never recruit. They more than likely don't attend trainings or participate on the Facebook page. Uh, they more than likely don't return your texts or phone calls or um, Facebook messages or emails. They've probably been essential or certified for pages. Um, I want you to put that person's name on the third sheet of paper, the one marked with the number three. Now, odds are that 70% of your team is going to end up on this page or in this category, and that is okay. They're in it for their own reasons, and they should not feel judged. All right, list number two. List number two is a little bit harder to fill up because you've got to take your opinions out of it. You are the judge of who belongs on this page. Their actions are. Just because you believe that someone will do wondrously well in Cincy and be crazy successful doesn't mean that they will. Or vice versa. Sometimes you can not really care for someone's style or not really love their personality, and they can grow to be extremely successful anyway. So I want you to take your opinions out of this. I want you to fill this list with people on your team that have the potential to be amazing. Perhaps it's the girl on your team that just got that brand new recruit and you noticed that she added a picture to her website. Maybe it's the guy on your team that just reached out to you for ideas on how to get fundraisers. Usually the people on this list are going to sell somewhere between three to $400 a month in sales and they may recruit maybe once or twice a year. And uh, statistics say that probably about 20% of your team will fall into this category or on this list. These are the ones with promise. They just need direction. They need focus and guidance, and they need inspiration. Okay, so I want you now to think of the consultant on your team who is really working it. I mean, they're amazing. They're at every function and training. They're constantly placing orders. They're even snagging recruits. Hey, they may not be good at everything, but they're really working it. They're trying hard. They try to communicate with you. They participate with their Sensi family. They hit promotions. They engage with their downline. Hey, you even hear them every now and then saying things like, man, I want to earn that trip, or man, one day I would love to do Sensi full time. I want you to place that consultant's name on your first list. This is the cream of the crop. And statistically speaking, only 10% or less of your team will end up on this list. So, Lee. Yakoka has this quote that I love. It goes like this. If you want to make good use of your time, you've got to know what's most important and then give it all you've got. Are you holding back because you don't really know what's most important when you mentor your team? Maybe you're not giving it all you've got because you just are confused, you're overwhelmed, and you don't know where to begin. I want you to think of these lists. I want you to think of your time, your energy, your focus, and I want you to imagine. Imagine a day when you didn't feel exhausted when you mentored your team. You felt energized. Imagine a day when you knew exactly what to do when you sat down to lead your team each day. Well, it can happen, and I'm going to show you how. But before I do, I want to tell you about Robin. I want to share Robin's story with you. Robin came to me as a discouraged director. She came to me for advice on what to do, how to get out of this funk. Robin had been to all of the trainings. She'd been to every reunion. Um, she participated in the calls. She read books. 
Um, and in my opinion, Robin was a pretty amazing director, but she was discouraged. She stayed discouraged. She managed her team out of duty instead of excitement. She didn't have any passion. And over the phone one day, I taught her the same thing that I'm teaching you, how to categorize your team. And then I challenged her in the same way that I'm about to challenge you. And she worked it step by step. I really didn't hear from her until the following week. And that's when she told me that this list system had changed her. And I could hear it in her voice. Before long, I could start to even see it in her numbers. What she told me really inspired me to start sharing this idea with other people. She said that th these lists helped her not feel like a failure, that she felt energized when she sat down to mentor her team, and she stopped comparing her results to other leaders and other directors. She said that now she was more focused and excited about helping her downline than she had ever been before. I started seeing a new trend in Robin's leadership. Hey, I started seeing a new trend in her team numbers. Even her rock stars began selling and recruiting more. And guess what? Her team volume started increasing and going up. And I was so excited to see something so simple like what I'm about to share with you actually really impact her and make her feel more confident. So are you ready? Do you want to feel brand new like Robin did? Do you want to drastically change your, your leadership for the better? Let's do it. All right, so grab that third sheet. Now, remember that the ones on this third list really don't want a lot from you. They don't expect a lot from you, but they happen to be the majority, so you cannot ignore them. You also can't get bogged down by them either. Um, I recommend involvement for this third list in the form of routine and consistent leadership on a large scale. So these would be the things that you would do for your team just because it's the right thing to do. I'll share with you a few things that I do um, in the form of routine and consistent leadership for my entire team, specifically tar targeting list three. So here are some ideas. Monthly team training, like live calls or local meetings or both. Facebook page somewhere that they can all meet together as a team and mix and mingle. Maybe team challenges or incentives. Uh, a once a month email of some kind. It could be a newsletter, or a spotlight, a current event, or maybe a training that you send them. Personal text, call, or postcard every four to six months. This group needs basic reminders of how to make samples, how to sign up for one more of the month, when a catalog is changing, or what the bring back my bars are. Don't ignore this group because I see amazing things happen when I do routine things with them. Um, you may find that some from your group three will emerge and move to your group two just because you have been consistent and been involved with them. Be careful not to overwhelm this third list because you'll chase them away. They still need bite-sized, sensey uh, portions, nothing too heavy. Um, this is something that I love to do. Every four to six months, I send everyone on my team, including the third list, a, a training of some sort by email and Facebook page. And I put the link to the training on there, and then I tell them, um, I ask them a trivia question that they have to answer. Within 24 hours, they have to text my phone the answer to be entered into a drawing for something small and fun, okay? Now, I love doing this because, yes, it helps me uh, be involved with level or with this third list. It also helps me find and determine who is really participating on this third list. And, hey, it's way easier for them to text me and get their number in my phone that way than for me to have to pull up the performance tab and actually manually put in everyone's phone number. Okay, so spoon feeding. This third list is well worth your time and your energy and your effort because if you don't, you're going to lose the majority of your team. All right, so list two. Are you ready for list two? List two will be your work of art. Oh, my gosh, you're going to have the most fun and satisfaction from caring for this list. Now, this list could fluctuate more than the other two lists, but you can help them gain stability 
by doing certain things. And if you do this right, you'll be the reason that some people on list two will become your number one list. You want to help, help cultivate the love that list two already has for this business. In other words, a lot of them don't know their why. They just know that they love Cincy. They sell and they recruit without even knowing really why, except you'll hear them say, oh, I'm just doing this because I love the product or I love Cincy. Well, I do everything for list two that I do for list three. But here are a few extra ideas that I use to specifically mentor the ones on my second list. I get to know them individually. I check their Facebook pages. I want to learn who they are. I encourage them to determine their why and to share it with me so that I can better mentor them. I personally invite them to set up a Voxer account. It's a free app, V. O X E R, and I tell them that I want to stay in communication with them, that I'm, you know, ready and willing to help them succeed, and that they're special, and I want to, uh, I want to help them along this journey. I also love to do this. I love to ask their opinions. List two would love to share opinions with you. So sometimes I'll reach out to someone on list two, and I'll say something like, "Hey, Susan, it's Laura. I'm thinking about doing a paint party at our next team meeting. What are your thoughts on this?" I love to pick their brains and get their ideas. Um, I also design my team challenges and incentives with this list in mind. And then one of my favorites, I love praising people. Um, I praise list two a lot. I praise them for the small things, like here are a few ideas. Carrie, I love your website name. You are so creative. Or Mandy, hey, thanks for sharing that Facebook tip. I really love that. Or you could say something like, Barbara, oh, my gosh, you've hit $300 every single month this year. You are amazing. Nice, consistent sales. Or you could say something like, oh, my gosh, Sarah, you're killing your PRV this month. Man, you're even beating my sales. Rock on. It's the little things. Now, you can also share books and videos that helped you along your journey because odds are it's going to inspire them too. Um, say things like, man, this book really changed my outlook on recruiting. And I know you've mentioned that you struggle with the recruiting. Read this book. It may help you, too. Um, or you could say things like, you know, man, when I used to really struggle with my fundraisers, this training video helped me tremendously. I'm going to share it with you because I know that you're trying to launch your fundraisers, and I, I believe it would help you, too. You see, list two will always feel inferior to list one because they're probably never going to see their name in lights. They're never going to make your top ten in sales. They won't be your top three in recruiting. And they'll probably never earn an incentive trip. But you can make them feel amazing. You can make them feel awesome. You can empower them to dream big and junk their comfort zone. And all the while, you can build a friendship and a bond with them and learn their why. They need training. They do. They need training on topics like finding their why, how to grow their list of 100, how to organize their business, how to recruit outside of their zip code, how to improve their basket parties and their home parties, how to get fundraisers. You see, list two, they'll be a sponge, but you have to come to them with the right spirit. Okay, so are you ready to write down some things for your first list? Your first list is significantly smaller. It's supposed to be. This is the list that's going to take up the majority of your time. You should communicate with this list weekly. You should know their spouse's name and other important facts about them. Um, this group probably already knows their why. Do you know their why? Have they shared it with you? Get to know their why. Um, more than likely, your future directors, the people that earn trips from your team, and even the ones that go to corporate events like reunion and spring sprint, they'll, they'll come from this first list. So you need to get to know them. Here are some ideas that I use to specifically target and help me be the leader I need to be for my first list. I send them random inspirational quotes or pictures because they're really working hard and they could, they could get overwhelmed or burned out. I Skype, FaceTime, or I call them once a week. I help them imagine their next promotion. I love doing this. So you could say things like, Hey, Maria, you're so awesome. I can already imagine what kind of director you're going to be. I invite them to become guest speakers on calls and trainings that I do. 
I give them personal challenges, and I do it with them. I love reaching out to someone on my on my first list, and I love saying things like, hey, Kelly, I need your help. Will you please um, do something with me? Maybe one day this week, you pick the day. Let's both of us start the morning off calling five people each, and let's see who can get a home party first. I need home parties. You know, it's it's all about engaging with them and making sure that they remember that, hey, you're out there doing the same thing they're doing, and you can make it a lot more fun by doing it together. Um, list number one needs encouraging. They need encouraging just like list two and three, but encouraging in a different way. So I like to encourage the people on my first list to get out of their comfort zone by taking on leadership roles. So I will ask someone on my first list, um, anytime I have to be out of town or like while we're going to reunion, I'll ask someone on my first list to be like hall monitor, okay? So on my Facebook page, they're going to be hall monitor. They're going to add an inspirational quote. They're going to maybe share a, uh, a YouTube video that they found that really was awesome. Um, maybe they might need to delete negativity that might pop up. Um, they also could, you know, just Stir the sensei spirit up any way that they feel that they can. This elite group, this elite category or list, number one, they do need individualized training, but they're going to get it mostly from communication one-on-one -on -one with you. They need training on topics like how to lead effectively, how to go from good to great, the power of no, learning how to inspire others, and things like that. Okay, I hope that you have written down some ideas on how to effectively mentor and lead each one of these three different categories of consultants because guess what? Each list is very important, and they do deserve guidance and inspiration. They deserve your time, but just in totally different ways. And in conclusion, I believe that anyone can sell and recruit for Sunsea. I really do. I believe that this opportunity is for everyone. Um, I also believe that it's my job, and to, it's my job to make it fun. It's my job to make sure that my leadership plays a, a good role and an and a important role in their journey. And in today's world, nobody stays doing anything if it's not fun to them. And so I feel like these lists help me make something more fun because guess what? If it's not fun for them, then they are going to quit Sensi and move on to something that looks shinier, that looks like more fun. So these lists have helped me keep Sensi fun. Um, it's also helped me set realistic goals for my team and, and not get so discouraged by expecting too much out of the wrong list. Um, I haven't gotten overwhelmed as much since I used these lists. I don't get as discouraged, so I challenge you. I want you to sit down with your team, whether it's one or whether it's 21 or whether it's 200, I want you to find a category for every single person on your team. Work your list. Make notes on your list. Hey, highlight the ones that are the ones to watch. Maybe you see someone that's emerging from that list about to hop to the next one. Highlight that person's name. And then don't forget to edit your list. Maybe every three months, every new quarter, because you know life happens, people change. And guess what? Even list three people can change. So I hope that you now feel more empowered and more confident as a leader. Um, I hope that you'll start working these lists. And as you start getting consistent with your actions, I hope that you build confidence. And I pray that your team volume doubles. All right. That's all I've got.